ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have some interesting things going on right now with AMC stock. We have the short interest, which is going higher. The amount of shares being sold short, which is moving higher. And AMC stock right at about $8 per share at the time of recording this video. Coming off the highs just a little bit as the market is continuing to kind of trend lower from the high we seen during the midpoint of the day. So we have a lot to get into here in this video. I want to get into what's going on in the markets as well here in this video. Um, what's going on with the dollar? What's going on with bond yields? This potential crash situation in the markets, which could end up being a full on collapse. We do need to uh, get into that situation a little bit more, provide you guys a quick update here. So, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. So, first things first, let's get into this whole crash situation. For whatever reason, my 10-year treasury um, chart is gone. And one of the reasons today, you could see the markets are performing a little bit better the nasdaq is definitely the outperformer today up 0.72 percent at the time of recording this video the s p is up 0.17 percent pretty flat overall two things that are really happening today um that that are notable here the 10-year treasury yield is down five and a half basis points i should point out the two-year treasury yield is down about 10 basis points today now why is this happening well one could argue that oil being down 5% eases the inflationary pressures across the board on headline and on core, and that might mean maybe not higher for longer. Now, why exactly oil is coming down so much? Um, from what I can tell is your inventory numbers that came out this morning were uh, much higher than expected, so maybe the the numbers are just not as not as you know low as as maybe we thought supply and demand maybe are in a little bit uh better uh balance i guess than maybe what we thought and here you could see some of these um numbers right here just not as bad as as last month still negative uh on, on an overall basis you could see um crude Crude oil imports did uh, fall by almost 2 million barrels, but you have crude or uh, Cushing crude oil stocks change um, positive 0.13 million barrels. Last month it was negative almost 1 million barrels. Distillate fuel production change negative 0.2. Last month was positive a little bit. Um, gasoline production change negative 0.31 million. Uh, last month negative half. Of 1 million and then if you go ahead and look at oil news today Saudi Arabia says it will maintain production cuts that have helped drive oil prices up so uh, you know you just didn't get any further cuts from anyone so that is also uh, a positive and a reason why oil is up or, or down today uh, but this is not you know one of those situations where oil is just going to keep falling i don't think i think that's the initial reaction and getting priced in of maybe no more cuts but i would be very hard pressed to sit here and say the rise in oil that we have recently seen from 67 dollars a barrel to about 95 dollars a barrel is over here at 85 dollars a barrel i think it really depends on the data that we get and just what the demand looks like uh, for oil so those are notable things to point out this is causing a uh, a little bit of a steepening or or inversion of the yield curve maybe i should say today um if you look the 10-year treasury is um down less than the two-year treasury so it does look like you are uh um actually you could be uninverting a little bit more today the two-year treasury is down more than the 10-year treasury uh, so that's pretty interesting lately we've seen the 10-year treasury rising more than the two years so you've seen a weird uninversion of the yield curve usually it's the short end that uninverts first as investors start to price in uh, rate cuts coming in the near term and your 10-year will hold up better but what you've seen is 
kind of an abnormal uninversion happening where the 10 year has been rising more than the two year. So the 10 year is almost higher than the two year, which is something that you really don't ever see, I guess. So a little bit weird, but as you guys know, as you uninvert, you're typically right about to head into a recession. So we'll see this time around. This time around is a little bit different if you will. Now, if we take a look over here on the charts, TLT is green a little bit. That is showing your, your bond situation. TLT is up about 1%. That is great news. KRE is up 0.10%. That's good news. What we've seen recently are your large banks. Yesterday, JP Morgan was down 1%. Bank of America was down over 3%. Goldman Sachs was down almost 5%. Wells Fargo was down about 3%. These banks getting absolutely destroyed yesterday, well, is not great. And I don't believe they're doing too well today in the grand scope of things, but they're not doing super terrible as well. Down 1%. Bank of America. JP Morgan's down a third of 1%. Goldman Sachs, hardly in the red. Uh, Wells Fargo, uh, in the green a little bit. So Bank of America not doing as great, but some of the other guys doing a little bit better. That's a situation you really want to be watching here. If the uh, if the big banks start to actually get into some trouble. Yes, yeah, Citi is down about 1%. Uh, I mean, kind of near the lows, right? getting pretty close to the lows. The low was $38.29. You were recently uh, just even up here as high as $48. So something is definitely not right in the banking system. I would say that much for certain. Now, if we take a look at the dollar as well, uh, it looks like the dollar is slightly up again today. Let's go ahead and see if my chart is just frozen or something no see the dollar is about flat on the day so you want to see if the dollar continues to go higher in the next coming days that's not going to be great so basically what's going on today oil is coming down that's taking the pressure slightly off the dollar taking some pressure off the bonds taking that inflationary pressure kind of out of the equation or some of those fears maybe out of the equation and that is good news as well but this situation it's not over. I think if the if oil was not down 5%, markets would not be in a great place. The S&P is not really up too much, right? It's only up 0.14% right now. And uh, um, the NASDAQ is up about half of 1%. I think the banks are really what you want to be watching here. The banks, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, all these banks sitting at bank, basically the banking crisis lows is not good. Okay, that's not what you want to see uh, right now. That's not telling you everything is fine in the land of banks. So if treasuries continue to move higher, or well, technically lower on this chart, but if treasury yields keep going higher, I think that's where you have a big problem here in the markets. If your big banks are getting hit hard, then you really are in deep waters there so there is that let's go ahead and take a look at the gdp now tracker see if that did uh, update as well see if we have a different we do not we're still expecting around three percent gdp coming on october 26th the next update we will get is on uh thursday so that is going to be tomorrow let's take a look at any economic data that we are going to have tomorrow um doesn't look like much imports exports initial jobless claims that's probably what's going to give it the 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 update is exports and imports i that's probably what i would imagine so you want to watch that that could be a little bit more important coming tomorrow you have some japanese data household spending but nothing too crazy and then on friday you're going to get the non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate that's going to be by far the biggest catalyst of this week and that could give the markets a very uh big move i mean that's that's your huge catalyst so you would definitely want to be watching that now amc stock let's take a look at the ortex data over here for this stock our favorite stock or least favorite stock i don't even know at this point but amc stock is right at eight dollars per share up 1.91 percent at the time of recording this video you have a live short interest of reflow at 12.5 percent up about three percent here on the day today 
24.72 million shares currently sold short, up about 700,000 shares today. So this is uh, starting to balloon a little bit more. If you actually take a look here as well uh, at the daily short interest numbers, you'll see the shares out on loan just went from about 26.23 million to 32.22 million. So the shares out on loan just jumped quite a bit, right? Quite a decent amount. Uh, about 54.51% higher in the last three months to be uh, to be a matter of fact. So that's a little bit weird. Usually shares out on loan does contribute to kind of, uh, you know, more shares being sold short. A higher number of shares that are sold short. So we'll have to see ultimately what happens with that one. Um, but looking pretty good as far as an increased um, short interest on AMC stock. Now, short score of 64, $188.63 million worth of short positions currently on AMC stock. Estimated short interest of reflow at 12.15%. Uh, days to cover 2.16, cost to borrow 2.54, utilization of 63.79%. If you look over here on the stock O tracker data, you'll see what I've you know said many times in in many videos now. The, you're you have like a two to three x call to put ratio for most of these expirations, right? For this expiration, it's about three to one, meaning about three times the amount of calls rather than puts. So I think that could set us up for really some some upside momentum throughout the rest of this week. If you look at next week, it's about one to one. If you look at the week after that, October 20th, our next kind of major um, option expiration, it's not like a like a big, big option expiration, but October 20th, you do have a lot of positioning. There's about a two to one ratio here for calls rather than for puts. So, you know, that's that's causing the put to call ratio to come down, which is what you want to see, right? You 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 never seen a you know multi hundred percent rally when the put to call ratio jumped um, ever since you know December January of 2023. Before then, you've seen a lot of multi hundred percent rallies when the put to call ratio was less than one. Well, now it's less than one again. Now it's at 0 0.79, and I believe will continue to trend lower. So that is going to be really good news. That's that's exactly uh, what you want to see happen. So uh, there, there you have it, guys. Uh, that's basically all for this video. If you guys want to look at the charts here, there's really not too much that is happening. AMC stock is bottoming out. It's really basing out, finding its demand in here around $8 per share. AMC stock is $8.03 per share, up 18%. 18 cents on the day, up 2.23%. You're above your eight day moving average. That is great news. You want to get above your next major moving averages, but they are way up here. Your 50 day moving average at $21.40 per share. So, as of right now, as long as you stay above your eight day moving average, that is great. The RSI at 31.83, first time being not oversold in quite a while and the MACD is continuing to soar to the upside this all points to potentially a multi hundred percent rally that could be to come now that the put to call ratio is down uh, you know under one I think it allows for that um, rally to take place so uh, those are my opinions that's kind of what I'm looking at here Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Let me know if you think AMC stock is about to go through a major rally and how you are trading this or playing this potential rally. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.